recording in progress. All right, hello everyone. Uh, this video is for my technical writing class for the Medical Institute. Um, specifically, this video is discussing or will be discussing the annotated bibliography assignment. Um, let me share the screen and we'll get right into it. I'll try and keep this short, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an overview of this assignment. Um, so if you click on course content and you go down to week three, technical research, annotated bibliography, uh, or the bibliography assignment is our second assignment in this uh, in this unit or in this week. Um, it says in this assignment, you'll begin working on a bibliography for your research topic and practice evaluating and documenting sources. Based on the rough topic outline you created in week two, locate six sources related to your research topic. You can include your choice of sources, but your sources list must meet the following minimum criteria a minimum of one source from the PMI online library database, one source from a web based search engine, one source, one website source you deem credible, reliable, and valid, and then a website source that you kind of question the credibility of. Um, so you find these four sources. Um, I'm sorry, six sources, but they have to include these four things, right? Mm -hmm. um, number two, you need to create a working annotated bibliography for your sources. Your bibliography should consist of a full reference for each source, followed by a description of relevant information about the source, following APA guidelines. And then finally, you're going to want to rank your sources from reliable, most reliable to least reliable, and provide a brief explanation to support the ranking of each source, applying criteria defined in this lesson for evaluating sources. Okay, um, let's take a look real quick at the rubric, and then I'll sort of break down how to approach this. Um, so here's the rubric for the bibliography assignment. Um, 10 points here for locating sources. Uh, basically, we have all the correct types of sources. Um, evaluating sources based on multiple criteria, so ranking them. Um, annotations, all summaries are accurate, clear, and address validity. Um, so we'll talk about annotations in a minute. Formatting, and then writing mechanics. Okay. So uh, let's see. First thing I want to talk about with this assignment is the PMI online library database. So you need to find at least one source from the database. If you click on library, um, it'll ask you to log in probably with your credentials that you use to get onto Blackboard. But then it'll take you to this place um, or this website. Uh, basically, what this is is an online database. So Pima has access to a bunch of cool database um, utilities here. Um, if you click on, for example, ProQuest, um, then you will come to a website uh, that looks sort of like this. Maybe let me go back. I was searching a bunch of weird things. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll take you something like this. Um, essentially, what a database is, it, it's sort of like a Google search engine, but specifically focusing on academic and scholarly journals, medical journals, science journals, things like that. So you'll get a lot of material written by experts in their field for experts in their field. It's sort of like, like the way I describe the literature ones to my English students in school is that it's sort of uh, an ongoing like conversation between these like expert nerds in their specific field, right? And they like publish their their big essay and then other people read it and then respond to it with their own essay. And the sort of building conversation of thing of, of articles um, develops and databases kind of collect all of that. Um, and so you can sort of pick a topic in a database and just go real deep on it and find lots of things that have been published about it for the last however long really. Um, so, um, I searched a bunch of random things, bloodletting, meditation, acupuncture, just kind of goofing around, um, trying to find a sample topic for today, just for this video. Um, and I found this article. I'm just going to pretend that this is the article that I'm going to do an annotated bibliography for. Okay. Um, second one. So that's, that's how you kind of handle the databases, search on them like, a, like you would on Google but they, that's kind of their purpose is to bring you more scholarly articles. Um, so the second thing it says here is you need to have one from a web-based search engine. Um, 
I was going to recommend, or I will recommend one moment. Um, you can use Google and that's fine. And you might be able to find some good articles that way. Um, I would recommend if you are using Google to put the word op-ed, op-ed in front of your article or in front of your topic. Um, and that way you might find some opinion-based articles on it. The other option is this is Google Scholar. So if you just Google Google Scholar, you will get here or just scholar.google.com. And similar to a database, it's the more like academic side of Google with a focus on articles. So I think I settled on acupuncture. Let's see. So I Google, I throw acupuncture into Google Scholar and I get um, at least 10 pages of hits. And these are all articles many of them coming from the annals of internal medicine, et cetera. So you might be able to use Google Scholar to find your research. Okay, next thing I want to talk about with annotated bibliography is um, going over to our good friend, Howell Purdue APA. If you simply Google um, Owl Purdue APA annotated bibliography, the first link, will be all about how to write annotated bibliographies, um, including breakdowns of how to do um, the actual annotations, sort of what should go into them. Um, generally, your annotation wants should be trying to write a brief summary, assessing the source, offering some criticism on it. Does it seem reliable? Is it current? Is it research? Is the research biased or objective? Just sort of analyzing the source. And then also trying to think about how you can use that source in your work. So that's sort of what your annotation one should be in a short paragraph. Um, so play around, you can look on here at the samples, just make sure you are looking at APA samples. So the first one is MLA, not APA. Here's an APA sample. Um, so you'll have the full reference for your source and then right beneath it, you will have a paragraph or two. I think for our purposes, one good paragraph is fine beneath the source sort of explaining what the source is, what it's about, um, if it's credible, etc. Okay, um, next thing I want to show you real quick is kind of just how to set this up. Maybe. Yeah, okay, so um, here is my cover page again. Tated bibliography is the name of my assignment. Here's my fake student. Um, here's the teacher name, date, my header, all of that stuff. Um, so that article that I found on acupuncture on the databases, I have written out the full APA reference for it. One thing I want to show you guys how to do right now is to apply hanging indentation to your references. Um, the way that you do this is, oops. Uh, the way that you do this is to simply um, highlight your whole reference, right click on it, um, click on paragraph where it says special here in the middle, click on that, select hanging. And what that'll do is it'll indent the subsequent lines at, under the first so that if you had a full reference page with a bunch of references, it would be real clear which where they began sort of thing. So you write your full reference like this, um, and then drop down a line and begin with your um, sort of summary annotation of it. So Richard Knox's essay um, discusses the Western hesitation to embrace acupuncture. Um, and then I would explain what this source is, what the kind of argument is, if I think it's credible, all of that stuff. So we would end up with, you know, a short paragraph or so. And then after that short paragraph, I drop down maybe a line and I begin with my next reference, um, whatever it might be. Something like this, right? I have my reference and then same thing. I write it, write my summary or my little annotation, four or five sentences explaining what the source is. Um, Finally, uh, remember that that last step of the assignment is for you to rank the sources. 
Um, you can do this a number of ways. You could just number them if you want. And then at the end of your, your page or the end of your annotated bibliography, you could write um, your little explanation of them, or you could include the ranking within the annotations. It's kind of up to you. Um, as long as they're ranked and you offer a little bit of explanation as to why you ranked them that way. Um, that's it. So briefly, the point of an annotated bibliography like this is to get you researching and to get you researching with a purpose where you are keeping track of information, you are bringing in sources, thinking through ideas, sort of seeing what connects in the research. Um, an annotated bibliography or a bibliography of any kind is simply just a collection of all your research. It doesn't necessarily mean that every source you find right now needs to be in your paper or anything like that. This is simply a research pre-writing um, process to kind of get you familiar with the conversation that is going on about your topic. Um, annotated bibliographies are super common assignments in any college class that requires research. Um, yeah, they're they're good. They're not that hard, I don't think. They just kind of force you to dig around on databases, dig around on Google doing research. Um, I hope this video helped clarify things. If you have questions, please let me know and I will be happy to help you out.